Hello from Finland. I'm Marko Mäkelä. I have been working on the InnoDB storage engine for 17 years and uh, four of that uh, for MariaDB Corporation. Today I'm talking about some performance improvements that we implemented in the MariaDB server 10.5 release. This is based on a talk that I gave earlier at the MariaDB Server Fest 2020. I hope that uh, you can watch that for some more detail. So today I will mostly ignore the transaction layer and uh, concentrate on the buffer pool and the mini transaction layer. Even if you have a uh, non-locking reads, uh, this uh, buffer pool is what, what is limiting concurrency or causing potential contention in your database usage. I like to compare databases with the protocol stack of the open system in the connection model. You may be aware of this uh, left side of, of this diagram that uh, we have the transport layer such as uh, TCP IP, which is providing uh, stream oriented reliable transmission on top of some unreliable packet oriented interface with uh, whatever means is used, such as Ethernet or Wi-Fi. On the database side, we have a transaction layer, which is providing atomic, consistent, uh, isolated and durable transactions. And you may have multi-versioning concurrency control providing lock fee, lockless reads, non-locking reads. Underneath of that, we have the mini transaction layer, which is providing atomic and durable changes to multiple pages. So you can, for example, you can uh, split a buffer, uh, a B3 and insert a record, and that would be an atomic operation, potentially involving multiple pages all the way from the leaf level up to the root level. And uh, the mini transaction layer is uh, conceptually also providing recovery because it guarantees durability. It means that if the server is killed, and restart it then based on a write ahead log that the mini transaction layer is writing it will be able to recover the contents of the buffer pool which is the cache of, of the data pages which are ultimately written to data files on the file system and the file system blocks of course they reside on some physical storage such as hard disk or SSD or persistent memory. There are some dependencies related to this uh, atomicity and durability. In the mini transactions, the logical time is given by a thing called the log sequence number. It is basically counting the bytes that are written, written to the right ahead log. And it is totally ordering the mini transactions. So only one mini transaction may be committing at, at a time. And there is no rollback for mini transactions, they can only commit or the server can be killed. But it's only forward di direction only. If a transaction is rolled back, then that would be multiple mini transactions that, uh, for example, delete records that had been inserted in the transaction. A mini transaction is durable if all of the log up to the end LSM of that mini transaction has been written to the persistent redo log. In InnoDB, also the undo log is uh, implemented as uh, buffer pool pages. So the buffer pool con contains B3 index pages and undo log pages and block pages. And all those pages are kept in sync with the redo log and with the write ahead logging. So we are not allowed to write any pages uh, to the files before the corresponding change has been written to the redo log. Because if, if the pages were ahead of the redo log, then recovery would not be able to recover up to that uh, latest page LSN. We might get an inconsistent state of the system. We want the recovery be such that everything up to a particular timestamp LSN has been recovered and nothing newer is available after recovery. To speed up recovery and to limit the size of the write ahead log, we have a concept called log checkpoint. It's basically deleting the start of the log. And uh, 
recovery will start from the latest log checkpoint LSN. It will read all the log records from the from the checkpoint LSN to the latest durably written log record. The time span between the checkpoint and the latest LSN is also called the checkpoint age. If the checkpoint age is longer than uh, the size of the circular RIDU log, then of course it means that uh, the tail of the RIDU log has overwritten the start. So when, you, when the recovery is trying to start from the checkpoint LSN, it will actually read something that was already overwritten by the end of the log record. So this is uh, something that we want to avoid. The log checkpoint H must not exceed uh, the size of the real log uh, plus some minus some safety margin. And this diagram uh, illustrates the relationships between uh, mini transactions and uh, the buffer pool. A mini transaction comprises logs and log records. The logs or latches as Heikki prefers to call them, they are supposed to be short duration like uh, microseconds or, or at most milliseconds when some file I.O. is involved. The latches cover things like uh, the index latch protecting the upper level pages of, of an index tree, not, not leaf level but the uh, root and any internal pages in the B tree. For example, if, if a B tree is going to be split or merged, then we may have to hold the index tree latch to prevent concurrent access. And then we have a table space latch. It is uh, protecting or preventing deadlocks in the page allocation bitmap pages. So if an operation needs to allocate or free pages, then the mini transaction has to hold the page latch. But for recovery purposes, these don't matter. Recovery only cares about these things that are marked in blue. The change, uh, pages that are changed in the mini transaction, uh, they are, uh, the changes are described by some log records that we first locally buffer in the mini transaction object. And uh, once the mini transaction commits, uh, this local log is copied to the global log buffer. And at that point, we obtain the current LSN, the current timestamp of the global buffer. That will be the end LSN of our mini transaction. And that LSN we will copy to the page headers in the fill page LSN field so that if the system is killed and restarted, recovery will only apply log records that are newer than the latest change in the page. Also, if a page was uh, first time modified by this mini transaction, then we will write this oldest modification field uh, with the LSN. So in th that case, uh, we will we will write write the oldest modification there, and uh, we will add the record uh, add the block to the flush list, so that if we are performing checkpoint flushing, we will be writing that page first, or, or the start of the flush list first so that we will be able to advance the checkpoint LSN. And uh, once we have written this uh, page header field and potentially written this oldest modification field, we can release the latches on, on these pages and on the table space and on the index. And other transactions, other mini transactions, other threads may continue operating on those. But the log buffer, uh, it can be separately written by some thread to the persistent log file. Once we have written any changes up to, up to the end LSN of this mini transaction, only after that we are allowed to write these pages that this mini transaction modified, unless some later mini transaction is modifying the pages again and the fill page LSN becomes newer again. We never may write pages to data files before the corresponding log record has been written. So the log LSN must always be at least as big as the page LSN. In MariaDB 10.5 we did some high-level optimizations which didn't seem to help so much in Sysbench. Some examples is that, uh, for example, in drop index operation we used to write uh, the freed pages to the data files even though their contents is basically garbage. 
In 10.5 we introduced a separate record indicating that the page is free and it doesn't need to be recovered. So we are not writing anything for, for the free pages. Also we are skipping the double write buffer for pages that uh, were, were newly initialized by the mini transaction or since the latest checkpoint. And crash recovery we also skip reading pages that we that it can uh, initialize based on read lock records only. Th this is uh, making the recovery and also some writes faster. One thing uh, that, that was recently done is uh, this uh, optimization to temporary tables. If, if a page of a temporary table is uh, modified, we will never write it uh, uh, along with the checkpoint flushing. We will only write it if uh, some pages need to be evicted and uh, and the, the least recently used page was belonging to a temporary table and we need to write it out in case the temporary table page is uh, retrieved later on, on before the table is dropped. So only for that case we are writing temporary table pages to the data file. For temporary table pages of course uh, we don't care about this log checkpoint because the redo log doesn't cover any temporary tables. Temporary tables will be lost at the uh, database restart. Now the main uh, content of my talk is uh, tackling the root causes of the bottlenecks that, that we found in the buffer pool. I would say that uh, previously there had been some workarounds for these bottlenecks. In MySQL 5.5 the buffer pool was partitioned based on a hash on a page identifier. So instead of having a single buffer pool, you could have multiple buffer pool instances. But still the checkpoint flushing and other parts of the buffer pool had to be done in such a way that there conceptually is a single buffer pool. So this splitting, in my opinion, was complicating things. For example, the log checkpoint would have to consult the oldest modification in each buffer pool instance. And things would become slower because of that. So in MariaDB server 10.5 we reverted to a single buffer pool and a single page cleaner thread to keep the buffer pool clean. I think that uh, even though SSDs are fast, it should still hold that uh, a single thread can keep the I.O. subsystem mostly busy. Also we had, and don't want to write so many pages to the storage what really matters for durability is the log writes. So we only need to make sure that the checkpoint flushing is uh, fast enough in case we get this uh, checkpoint age exceeding the size size of the uh, safe size of the read log file. In that case we need to do the checkpoint flushing and the page flushing but otherwise I think that uh, its performance should be okay if we just fix the page cleaner. So generally I think that the contention at the low level is very expensive and historically in InnoDB there, was a, there were, was a set of parameters InnoDB thread concurrency and InnoDB commit concurrency and so on that you could set to artificially limit uh, the number of threads that can execute inside InnoDB. Back in MySQL 5.0 or maybe 5.1, 5.5 still uh, InnoDB couldn't scale, uh, scale to more than uh, maybe four or eight threads and it made sense to set these parameters. But uh, in uh, recent times, especially with, with the improvements that we made in MariaDB 10.5, it actually turns out that uh, on a machine with about uh, 50 CPU cores, we can scale nicely to 1000 connections or 2000 connections. And by scaling nicely, I mean that uh, the total throughput is not much less than the maximum throughput that, that you would get with the optimal number of, of connections, which is close to the number of CPU cores. So we simplified some things and I will describe them, them in more detail on a later slide. Also I think that uh, it's a good idea to partition mutexes that uh, control access to global data structures but the data structures themselves shouldn't be partitioned if, if they really are global in nature. 
So for example, in, in MariaDB 10.5, we have a single redo log file and we have a single buffer pool. So Einstein said that things should be made as simple as possible, but not any simpler. Unfortunately, it turned out that uh, there was a pretty bad regression in some write heavy workloads. And we had to make the page flushing as simple as possible. It wasn't previously. And what we did there, well, in page writes, we had a big contention point, the file system mutex. It would be acquired several times for a single page write. First, to look up the table space based on the numerical page ID that we find in the buffer pool block descriptor, and uh, then to protect some fields for bookkeeping, like how many threads are holding this, uh, are, have pending operations on this file, or or whether there are some things that need to be f-synced to the file before the file is closed. For those, we are now using atomic memory access operations, and we don't need the mutex at all. Also, my colleague Vlad Weintraub noticed on, on a Windows system that ran on a hard disk that uh, the synchronous writes on the double write buffer were severely, severely conflicting with f-sync or f-data-sync operations. So, uh, based on his advice, we are now using uh, a separate, uh, we are using two memory buffers for 128 pages. And uh, once one of the buffer gets full, we will initiate an asynchronous write of all those pages. And once we get, uh, get the completion callback, we will write the individual pages to the final data files. And uh, for, for uh, uh, at the same time, when, while this uh, double write, asynchronous write is in progress, we can fill the other memory based buffer. So instead of two 64 byte synchronous writes, we use a single asynchronous 128 page write. And it makes things faster because it's no longer conflicting with the wait for the F sync. Also, in addition to the Microsoft tools that uh, Vlad used, uh, I used uh, in Linux record dash t with the thread ID of the page cleaner thread. That was very useful to find some bottlenecks. Here is a diagram of, of uh, things that illustrate what, what we have done. One big thing was, uh, was that the, the page hash of the buffer pool, which is mapping all the pages, page IDs to the blocks in the buffer pool, it was rewritten. We have uh, read-write locks in each CPU cache line, which are covering the hash array slots in that same cache line. So if you have a 64-byte cache, uh, cache line size and 64-bit processor, you would have uh, seven hash slots and one lock per slot, and you wouldn't have any false sharing due to this uh, latch that we have for protecting these hash table slots. In this diagram, we have Four pages, one of them belongs to a temporary table space. It's not in the flash list. The flash list is in orange. And then we have the hash table links uh, in blue color. And uh, we see that the, this hash table entry is uh, pointing to two different pages. And the other two pages are directly pointed to by, by, by the hash table LRU list. The these decently used pages is also covering all the pages that exist in the buffer pool. So all four pages are linked there. So the page A is the least decently used one. If we had to evict some page to make room for other pages, then this would likely be, be the victim. And we would have to write it out because all pages are dirty. All, all these oldest pages are dirty and we don't want to replace or evict the most recently used page. And for checkpoint flushing, we would start from the flush list. Start from the flush list. So page B would be the first page to flush uh, for checkpoint flushing. The I/O patterns uh, of the buffer pool they greatly depend on on the usage pattern of how the data is being accessed, which pages are being written and read, and in which order.
Well, I already covered this eviction flushing in the previous slide. If all pages are all all least recently used pages are dirty, we cannot evict any of them directly, but we have to write out some dirty page first and then we can on IO completion we can replace that page. Before this change in MariaDB's uh, 1057, we had single page flushing and it was very slow. Now, now we have the user threads are, are doing uh, batch flushing multiple pages per batch and uh, it performs much better. This batch flushing is no longer done by the page cleaner thread, it's done by one of the user threads that, that is trying to allocate a page. Uh, checkpoint flushing, like I mentioned, it's uh, needed to ensure that the, that the log checkpoint age doesn't grow too big. If you want to avoid uh, the impact of checkpoint flushing, you should set the, the log file size as big as possible. You shouldn't be shy to to make it uh, larger than the buffer pool size, because in uh, MariaDB 10.5 we have fixed some things in the crash recovery and it shouldn't run out of uh, memory during recovery. So if you have a very big uh, read lock size, then the checkpoint flushing should be rather infrequent. In the page cleaner, uh, to fix the latency, in addition to moving the other view flushing to the user thread, we removed some uh, re recovery specific mode and we removed some weights. When we are trying to flush a single page, we are no longer initiating a log write inside that thread. Instead, we, between batch, batches, we are asynchronously initializing a log write, so that if in this batch uh, some uh, page is too new for, for the redo log, the next batch will be able to write that page. Also, we are using normal mutexes and condition variables for synchronization. InnoDB used to have its home view mutexes and events which didn't really scale well. Uh, for uh, reducing the latency between user threads and, and this emergency flushing which is trying to keep the checkpoint age uh, small enough, we did some uh, tweaks. For example, at the mini transaction commit we can already initiate uh, flush ahead in the page cleaner thread so that uh, the next uh, mini transaction will not have to wait for for the flushing uh, checkpoint flushing to occur. There are some future improvements coming in MariaDB 10.6. We are removing or replacing the old homebrew read-write locks and uh, we are completely removing the mutexes and using normal mutexes and uh, condition variables instead. Also one contention point still is the transaction lock system mutex which uh, we hope to fix in 10.6. In in future versions, we will have to change some file formats to get some more more room for improvement, such as uh, improving the the secondary index page format to have per record transaction ID. I would like to conclude with a remark that concurrency is hard, but performance is even harder. We have an even bigger combinational explosion of uh, additional parameters like what type of hardware you have and uh, and uh, well it also t with real hardware instead of running things on ram disk you have uh, latencies io latencies and and things like that and it really can take time for the system to re reach a steady state so a 5 minute benchmark might not be enough you would have to run it for half an hour or one hour and uh, it's really limiting what, what we can do but i hope that we in the future we will improve our benchmarking thank you this is all i wanted to say thank you for your attention